Welcome to John Fallon's Indie Film NYC Podcast, where we help filmmakers merge the art and business of independent filmmaking. I'm your host, John Fallon. For episode 11, I wanted to put some focus on screenwriting software, one of the most important tools for a filmmaker, because without a script, there is arguably no film. I discovered Writer Duet about a year or two ago, and it's the screenwriting software that I always advocate people use when they ask me for a recommendation. So, because I thought it'd be useful to the indie film NYC audience, I jumped onto the internet and connected with the creator of Writer Duet, Guy Goldstein. Guy is a hands-on CEO that has built his company from the ground up with a grassroots, word-of-mouth style of marketing. While Final Draft continues to often be considered industry standard due to its integration with support software for scheduling and budget breakdowns, Writer Duet is fast becoming the go-to choice for screenwriting software by the modern filmmaker. One of the reasons Writer Duet is gaining popularity is because it is one of the most flexible programs on the market. Writer Duet has the ability to directly import scripts written in most of the major software choices available. It can also export an FDX file that can be opened in Final Draft or any of the aforementioned support applications without any need for reformatting or conforming like some of the other importers. Because of the ability to be nimble and adapt to changing needs in the screenwriting industry at a moment's notice, such as the rapidly growing film industry in China, Writer Duet is becoming popular on a worldwide level. I find the story of the company's beginnings and its rapid growth to be both fascinating and important in the filmmaking world. Without further ado, I invite you to listen to my interview with Guy Goldstein. I'm here today with Guy Goldstein of Writer Duet fame. And uh, we're going to talk to him about his amazing software. And uh, how are you doing today, Guy? I'm great. I'm glad to know I'm famous. That's cool. <laughs> well, you're famous in some circles, I suppose. Uh, I mean, I hear about you all the time, but I'm always on uh, Reddit and uh, Facebook and uh, places I probably should rather be working. But, uh, Me too. <laughs> well, that's one thing I want to get into a little bit. But uh, before we go social media, tell me a little bit about what your connection is with screenwriting. I don't know like what your background is as a person. Yeah, as a person, uh, I was born a long time ago. And I did some stuff. No, I started as an actor, actually. I was like five years old. Uh, my sister is a playwright, and she was writing since I was about that age, a little bit older maybe. But I was doing her shows. I was doing stage theater in upstate New York. And I had really just been an actor. And then I got into writing. I got into improv first, uh, where I started performing that in California for a few years. And uh, I realized I had serious control issues and didn't like when anyone else said the wrong thing, which is terrible as an improviser. You cannot be an improviser if you feel that way. But it turns out it makes you uh, at least a wannabe screenwriter. So, um, so I started writing probably uh, six, seven years ago, something like that, years ago. And uh, mostly I was not interested in the technology for writing at the beginning. It was just uh, writing as, as the creative part. But I found I was a very just technical person, so I would analyze well, how long should scenes be, what made you know the flow of, of, of the scripts work, and those are just a basic sort of question. A few other sort of just physics of screenplays that I was curious about as a writer, and I couldn't find any answers, so I wound up writing some tools that would parse PDFs and analyze existing screenplays. Um, I was like, oh, that's cool. I learned some information, learned some stuff that probably other people would like to know too. So I probably should share that someday. But I uh, also found out. Well, hey, what can you do now that you've broken up a screenplay? And another thing I had been interested in specifically was writing, or was listening to scripts because I had friends who would send me stuff I didn't really want to read because it just took too much time. And so I wanted to listen with like computer voices or whatever. And so I started then I started building some more technology, which I'm sure we'll get into, to help me basically as a writer and as someone who wanted to uh, be involved in writing communities. So uh, at what stage of your life did you start doing? Uh like software developing and I mean how did you know how to do some of that stuff I was pretty young so I, I, I did everything pretty young so I started acting pretty like really early and then I started programming probably like 13 years old and was writing professional code since that age pretty much uh, just kind of do things I had my uh, probably my first uh, company I guess that I'd done it wasn't officially a company actually it was a product that I sold and, and made some very very small amounts of money on uh, was when I was like 15, 16 I, I wrote a tutor coordinator program that ran your entire tutoring center at my college originally, uh -huh. and then uh, sold some like schools. Uh, but yeah, that was my first like foray into independent programming. I also had to get a family business that I worked at and build stuff for them, and uh, I've had a lot of experience writing code that people use for very important things. I built compilers for 
uh, embedded industries like aerospace and cars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like high reliability where stuff has to work. And so I came at this programming with sort of the same attitude of how do you make good software, even though it's not an industry that people die if it goes wrong. It's an industry where people are really sad if it goes wrong. <laughs> and, and that became really important to me to make people not never be sad. That's my motto. <laughs> nice. That's a good motto. <laughs> Write it down somewhere. <laughs> well, I have it on, I have it on uh, record now. So. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you were writing some screenplays. Were, were, you, were you trying to like make it as a screenwriter? Did you have an agent? Like. Well, tell me no, a little no. bit about I, I was uh, the first one, not the second one. I was uh, trying to make it, and I was never, I probably was never as serious as I needed to be, but I certainly was interested and wanted to do it. I thought I, you know, naive first screenplay kid who want, thought I was brilliant and, and thought I would make it probably, but uh, I was still working full time at my software job building compilers, and it really it never not occurred to me, it probably occurred to me to be a professional writer or whatever, that'd be interesting, but I w was a programmer, and that's so. Okay. By my focus, and so that was your day job at the time. You were yeah, that was my day job. I was interested in it. I sort of lost as much interest in that specific job, but mm -hmm. like you see, as soon as I started writing screenplays, I thought about how to write code for screenplays. So I probably fall back on that no matter what I'm doing. Sure. Um, and so, what did you see missing? Like, obviously, you were using probably whatever the standard was at the time. Uh, what was missing? Like that you felt that okay, I can make something a little bit better. So um, there's a couple more jumps in the story, but the okay. real feature that was missing, um, and you'll see why the name is Writer Duet, was the real-time collaboration. So there was no screenwriting program. The file draft didn't do it. Um, Celtics didn't do it the way I thought they should. Um, they had you know, something for collaboration, but it wasn't really what I wanted. And same for file draft, actually. Um, so I, I built the first real-time collaborative screenwriting program where you type it, they see it, they, see, they type it, you see it instantly back and forth. Different pages, same page, doesn't matter. Online, offline, doesn't matter. All those things. And that was the real killer feature at the time. And honestly, that would, would have been enough for, let's say, you know, pretty pretty good, large percentage of the screenwriting world. But what I found was that solving just that problem was really useful to a lot of people. But then they wanted, well, I want to use this full time. I don't want to go back and forth with, let's call it the professional screenwriting program like Final Draft. And so they wanted all the same professional features that, that Final Draft does offer. And so I have a lot of those, and all of those by now, probably. And by... By the same token, there were things that File Draft didn't do and that no one was doing that were just good ideas that either I had on my own, but mostly that people suggested to me, like, hey, I wish I could see old versions of lines. I don't think that was my idea originally. Maybe it was, but um, Writer Duet has infinite revision history. And things like that are just useful features for anybody, not just the real time aspect that I, I wanted to, to be able to have myself. And I think a lot of writers find it really useful. The infinite revision tracking actually incidentally fell out of real time because we had to keep edit list because if you make a change and I make a change, there's no right answer. We both made a change to the same line. So we had to know not just what the final result was, we had to know what the edit was. Did I insert the letter G and you insert the letter H? Well, we had to know exactly that change. And so it turns out is you get all this information that you have a history of and now you can go back in time and say, well, what were all the versions of this line? What was all the version of this scene? What was all the version of this script? And things like that were just sort of cool features that not fell by accident, but turned out to work really well. And you can go down to that level of like yeah. the history of one particular line of yeah. dialogue. Yeah, if you, uh, you use our do it, I know. So you can just click on the left of a line. There's a little shoe undo icon. If you click that, you see a full history for that line. Oh, and you okay. can see same thing first. You can highlight a scene in the pro. That's in the free version. The pro version as well. You can, like highlight a scene and see all the versions of that scene in history. You can actually literally watch yourself writing the script. It will replay all the edits uh, in you know a, a fast forwarded mode. So you don't have to sit there watching yourself. <laughs> What, think about a life for two hours. What narcissist uh, really wanted that? <laughs> uh, I, I would like to be a name, but it was definitely requested by someone. But uh, that feature, it, a lot of times you find that you make one thing and it turns out to be really useful for something else. So that feature um, wound up being used for a much more useful feature, which is infinite search, where I can literally say, hey, I have this great line. It's not in the script anymore. Um, he said, like, hey, you. So I search for Hey You in history, and it finds the script at the last point, the line Hey You was there, it shows what that script looked like. Wow. So that actually fell sort of for free-ish out of this time-lapse thing I had built. Right. Uh, yeah. So sometimes you make something for a kind of silly reason that turns out has a really practical use. Yeah, no, I, I heard the same thing about uh, the, the functionality where it will read the script for you, and uh, this one friend I have, he says he, he'll listen to it so that he can just catch, like, 
you know, misspellings of words. Even. Absolutely. And That's one of the best things. And like, for example, repeated words, like your eyes never, I, I know it's because they caught my own. I'm, I am a very good speller. I don't make mistakes. I'm perfect. Uh, but I still ran um, the, the the voice thing and found lots of errors. Sure. And they were like, duh, duh. Because my eyes just skips things like that. And you're typing really fast and you're just in the zone. And you don't think about it either time. And the really interesting thing about it, not just errors, but when you read a, your own screenplay, you kind of know what's going to happen. So you skim it, you skip it. Right. If you have a long block of dialogue, a long action thing, you just kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, he fights, whatever. Um, <laughs> but when you listen to it, you're forced to hear every word. Mm -hmm. And what often I would find is, wow, this is really boring. <laughs> I have spent 40 <laughs> seconds talking about him picking up a napkin. And, <laughs> like, you can't cheat when you're hearing someone read it to you. And that's a really valuable thing. So whether it's, you know, the perfect performance with a computer voice, no, it's realistically just a computer. But it tells you what your words are. And you can't fast forward to it. Right, right. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, uh, when did this all start? Like, when was the first person, other than yourself, able to use Rider Duet? So, Rider Duet was actually the second program, incidentally. Read Through was first. Uh, Read Through has, readthrough.com, which is the one that has the voice actors and computer voices, was actually the first one I made. And it's sort of funny because it just relaunched it right now as a plug-in into Rider Duet. But it was originally its own thing. And that was six years ago by now. Um, and I, I tend to have the idea of you make something, you put it out really quickly, because that one just never caught on. I probably built about two and a half years building it, and it never became popular, enough to really you know, make money or sustain yeah. itself. Sure. And I was still working on it. I was happy with it. But about probably three and a half years ago, it was January 2013, I, um, the idea for I do it is not brilliant. There's nothing brilliant about real-time collaboration. People do that at Google Docs every day. Sure. People have wanted it for screenwriting for, for many, many years. It was. It wasn't like, hey, oh wow, what if we did real time collaboration? It was like, oh, this is how we would do it. And so I think I had a pretty good way of building it from the ground up to be real time across the board. Right. And so that happened in 2013. And within I think about three months of the motivation to do it and the idea, I had released a beta at South by Southwest in Austin. Uh, and what I immediately found is I didn't really know. I, I thought Read Through might still be the big product, and where I do it was a cool toy I made. But instantly, like within a week. I was like, oh, more people are signing up every day for writer duet than read through. Wow. I'm doing zero advertising. It's just for me telling like a bunch of writers or filmmakers at South by suddenly it was hot, suddenly, you know, hot right. is the wrong word, but it was yeah. already catching wind. And then I, I read it, we talked about social media or we will. I think that was the first place I really told people in a, in mass who I didn't know. And, was that on the uh, the reaction forum? was amazing. Was that on the screenwriting forum? Screenwriting forum on Reddit, and I didn't really know what people would think. I thought people might try to say, "Oh, it's another toy, it's another whatever," but really, everyone says, "Oh my God, thank you!" Now, I don't. Know, maybe you can find the original post. I don't remember anymore. I remember kind of around that time that uh, like yeah, yeah, that uh, people were kind of getting the first excited. Thing I really owe a lot to the guy who really made the first what's called big announcement to the world was Craig Mason of Strip Notes fame, who was with John August, uh, and Craig is. Not only a wonderful person, in my opinion, that yeah, was very, very helpful to be and very nice, uh, but he just really cares about writers and he cares about like making better things for writers. You'll listen to script notes and know that he has no real agenda, I think, other than helping people, as far as I'm concerned. Right. And it was very nice that he chose to talk about mine after I bugged him on Twitter a few times. He finally, you know, without telling me, I had no idea he was going to do it. He made it his uh, one cool thing, mm -hmm. which uh, they used to do. And, and they still do. It was, yeah, so, yeah they, 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 they kind of go on and out of that one. They used to do it like, all the time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they made it that, and, and that really announced it to the world. And then No Film School, which I also owe an immense amount of gratitude to, No Film School picked it up because of that, again, without telling me. Uh, I just wrote an article. The only reason I knew it happened was I was like, wait, there's a huge traffic spike. <laughs> um, so that's something that happened today. Uh, so I like, you know, I guess I looked at the refers and saw No Film School. I wrote this really nice article yeah. just based on Craig. I haven't talked about it. Yeah, no, in fact, I think, not this last episode, but last, the week before, he mentioned it again. I mean, he, loves, oh, that's, yeah, okay. he, he talks I about it all the time. I mean, I, I listen to that weekly. I like that podcast. They're great. Like, they, I don't know if you ever come to the Austin Film Festival, but I got to meet, uh, meet John Ox and Craig here oh, nice. uh, in Austin. I live in Austin, and um, they're really nice. Craig yeah. is probably coolest person who is also like a superstar in my opinion. Uh, there, are many, there are other really cool ones who I've been thankful to know. So I want to talk a little bit about the social media aspect. So, you know, again, I, I first became aware of Writer Duet on the screenwriting forum on Reddit. And, uh, you know, uh, I just want to know, how, how did you use social media to grow the business and, and why did you, 
Like, why did you go that route? Uh, well, the truth is, I really just use Reddit. It's not social media in mass. I have a Facebook group that I post to maybe once a week if I'm lucky. I okay. Twitter I post to whenever I feel like it. It's not very often. So I'm not good at social media. I don't. Okay. Not that I don't care. I think it's really valuable. I just don't have the skill set or the energy or the interest mm-hmm. in being that person. And with Reddit, I don't think of it as social media, actually. I think of it as just people who are interested in the same thing I'm interested in. And to me, it's just more like, they're not friends, obviously. Some of them probably hate me because uh, I post <laughs> sometimes and they get annoyed. But to me, they are. I mean, actually, I do have some really good friends I met from there, and I met them in real life, and I've worked with them. I'm, some really high-level professionals uh, happen to frequent that sub. Yeah. And uh, they're really my Craig does. Craig, Craig does, does. Yeah, yeah. I didn't meet him there, but he does, and, and a few other guys I can't say by name. <laughs> um, but uh, they hang out there, and I, we got to know each other from that originally. And then they asked for features, they had suggestions or ideas. And um, like I said, it just felt like people who wanted good things and were interested in what I was doing. And I like to share, I like to get their feedback. And Reddit alone, you know, like, to me, it's not social media, it's just a bunch of nice people who have mostly been very, very helpful. So then why not, like, why why can I not go to Walmart and find a package with Ryder Joy inside? You know what I mean? Uh, why, like, what's what's up with that? Like, why? So you know, the real, there are probably two answers. The one easy answer is, screwing yeah. software is not a consumer product in the same way as, like, you know, rollerblades or whatever are going to be. So sure. you, you aren't going to find it in most places. Why is it not in the Ryder store? Um, you probably have to ask the writer's store. Uh, we certainly are open to working with them. Okay. Uh, so, hey, if you're listening, guys, tell me. Uh, no, I think in the end, right, it could be a lot more places, and it's not. And okay. you can blame me. You can say I'm not doing the outreach necessary for it. I'm not. Uh, but, you know, you're, 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 I think you signed up for the affiliate program, so we're open to that. We want people right. to share, and we want to encourage that. And we're not like, hey, we're not giving away any money. You know, we're, we're pretty open about helping people sell our product or letting people sell our product and helping me help us, I guess is the real truth. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I think it's just such a great way to like, you know, you're, you're hearing from other, from peers that this is a good product, you know, and that, you know. Like, that, you that's the great part. It. Like, Reddit Duet is such a word of mouth advertised. It's not, I don't do Google ads, I don't do anything. I don't, it's not that I don't care, I guess. It's just I don't want to do things I'm not good at and mm-hmm. probably waste the money. Uh, it's almost all been word of mouth and, and you and I are both at, you know, in the, in the screenwriter, a couple of screenwriters groups and you'll see right. really, really positive things there and that often leads to a lot of new customers and new users and in the professional ranks, it's the same thing. I don't know how many professionals didn't hear about it from other professionals. Um, you know, how many just, maybe they heard about the this podcast or places like that but they're not, no one, very few screenwriters are Googling, hey, how do I, what's a good screenwriting program? They all kind of know Final Draft or whatever they right. choose to use. But a lot will hear about writer duet from other writers who are really happy using it, and they'll say it's, it's better in their opinion, maybe in the final draft. Mm-hmm. And you hear that. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to, I guess I probably have said it's better in the final draft a number of times. On your show, I wouldn't say that. Other people have said right, right. that it's a lot better than the final draft in their, in their opinion. Um, and, and that's the really great thing about not doing marketing is you let it organically take its route, and if it wasn't popular, it wouldn't sell. But, I mean, I think the the big like uh, holdout on on some people that I hear from are more the production people who are like, well, I you know I do budget breakdowns or whatever, so I have to bring in a FDX. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, but it's and, a great point, and, and we very glad you brought that up. We export FDX files, right. like you know, we, FDX is a very very nice format that Final Draft made, and all it is if you ever look at it in the plain text editor, it's XML, which is about as simple as it gets for people to generate. And I am very thankful that Final Draft did it. It means that we can read and write their format. Pretty much seamlessly, we'll actually import their margin information, all the formatting, all the rules, and you can. There's there are a couple exceptions, some of which I consider bugs in Final Draft, in my opinion. Uh, but you'll pretty much open a Final Draft document and get the exact same page count, everything, block pages, okay. revisions, everything inside Writer Duet. And it works the other way too. Like I can Absolutely. bring in yeah. whatever I want. Yeah, as bring, well, right? bring in the Final Draft, export the Final Draft. We have a very very open system. And this is even in the free version. We don't try to lock people in because we think they're going to like it so much. They're not going to leave on their own. Right. So I, I mean, Final Draft, you, you largely. Not so you can't. You have a very difficult time importing from other formats or exporting other formats from other screenwriting programs. We go the opposite route. We seamlessly import a fountain, export fountain. If you want to work on any other program, we think you should be able to. And FDX, Celtics, you can actually import a PDF document into write it through it and make it fully editable. And those are things that just making screenwriting more accessible and making people's choices better is pretty important to me. I had uh, one one fellow today. I, I 
posted on Facebook in a screenwriting group, you know, mentioned I was going to talk to you, and he said uh, the one thing that he's upset about, and he meant that air quotes, he has a software from uh, 89 or so that Jerry Seinfeld used to use to write uh, the Seinfeld show, and he can't import with that format, and he wants, he wants you to update that. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'll get to it in 1989. If I uh, ever go back, I think it's called probably, movie yeah. screenwriter, and uh, I there's probably like four people on the planet using it, so it's probably not high demand. But <laughs> that's, that's why we do PDF is because we want to be able to import. Right. You can pretty much import any PDF that wasn't. There's two types of. There's image based ones which you actually can't import right. because there's not text. But if, if you can highlight the text by hand on the thing, mm -hmm. that means it's text-based, in which case we can pretty much import it. And we'll get all the, you know, we're not going to get the exact same page count or anything because we're not going to import margin information. But mm -hmm. it will actually, it'll automatically figure out all the you know, exterior interior. That probably means it's a scene heading, all caps like that. It's probably a dialogue line. It's a character line. So you wouldn't have to reformat manually. It should import it oh. and make it look like a screenplay. Right. Now, uh, I want to talk about some of the functionality of Rider Duet that may be like, you know, obviously everything is kind of uh, set up to be industry standard so that, you know, I can theoretically write this script and send it to my agent or a production company or whatever. But what are some of the functionalities or what, what are the some of the features that maybe are underused or maybe, like, maybe beginners don't know about? Give me a couple, like, insights to some of those. Yeah, I think... And for the record, there are so many. I'm not going to list them all, I'm sure you, but trust me, there are more. Um, I think even revision history is one people don't necessarily even realize they can do. Like, you can realize probably you can see the line history, you can see the whole script history, export it to any date and time, whatever you want, and your script is there. Um, I think some cool things, uh, maybe people do know these, but I just think they're cool. For example, the scene cards on the left, uh, they have a little checkbox on them. And if you check that box, it will hide all the other scenes except the one you want to work on. And you can say, check the first scene, check the last scene. And you just put the first and last next to each other with you know, a mark in the middle. And so you can edit your first scene and your last scene uh, at the same time. You can also do the same thing with characters' dialogue. So you can say, hey, show me just uh, Nick's dialogue. And it shows just Nick, line, Nick, line. And you can still edit it. It's all properly formatted and live. And you can just export that if you want as PDF. You can edit it there. And you can do the same thing with character scenes. So you can say, just show me scenes that Nick is in. So when you want to print out actor stuff, you can do that really easily. And the, the dialogue one is super useful if you ever do a, a consistency pass to make sure if you're in a screenplay for maybe a year or two or many years, you might have sort of over time changed the way a character sounded, but you want it to just sound consistent throughout the script. So I find that a really useful, useful tool. And the other thing is kind of like that in the report section. Um, pin dropping is something I love where you can be working on a session, you know, hey, I'm going to go back here and I'll look at this other thing. So we thought you drop a pin. You then go somewhere else and you can jump back to where you were and you can have a bunch of pins and kind of go boom, 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 boom through them and, right. and keep your script um, where you want to be. Uh, I think those are some of the really fun ones. So also like dictate, people don't probably use that too much, but I think it's really cool that you can just speak your script. And um, I'm actually looking at the project right now to remember what some of their cool features are. Right. <laughs> but, but there are a lot. It's just one of those things that where if people suggest something mm -hmm. and it sounds like a good idea, I'll probably say, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then I do it. And usually it doesn't take me very long. It turns out, like, most things are pretty simple. The number of things I can point to and write or do at the, oh, man, that was hard. Right. Not that many. Probably about a dozen features. Like, ah, oh, that, that took some serious thinking. The rest are probably, maybe it took me a day. So when you update, let's say you find a new feature, you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> I don't know. Like, oh, you know, all, all this character's dialogue is going to be in blue. Let's say you, for whatever reason. <laughs> and you implement that today. Yeah. How long until the end user sees that? Like, do I just see it as soon as I log in? Or? Yes, I mean, later today. If I implement it today, you know, it's the kind of thing where Red Duet is on the internet and it has a desktop application as well. Um, but with the internet version, I update, you know, whenever possible. I obviously you know, have testing, you have to test it, make sure it runs right. If it's sort of risky in that it affects a lot of things, I'll put it through more extensive testing period. Um, but typically, if it's just like a small feature that uh, is part of another sort of small feature, uh -huh. then all I have to do to make sure is nothing breaks, and nothing usually does, and just kind of just put it out there as fast as possible. And, and what about for yeah. the desktop client? Do I desktop just... client updates less frequently, and that's both good and bad. The good part is it's stable, it's always the same. If you open it up and you haven't downloaded a new one, you're using the same one you were using yesterday. Not true of the web app. Web app right. using the most recent copy all the time. Okay. Um, and the downside is features 
get into the desktop application much more slowly. But you know, on average, we probably update it every once a month on average. So it usually doesn't take that long for features to get in. And typically when the desktop app is released, it's been well vetted on the website. So it's kind of nice to know that it, it's unlikely there's a major problem in the desktop app. The web app is also unlikely, but it happens. <laughs> and from what you're hearing, like how are people using it? Are people mostly using the web app or... I think most of the web app, and the web app has an interesting feature. In the, talking about the pro version, um, where you have both the web and the desktop app, they actually work pretty much the same. Um, in Chrome, in the Chrome browser, you can actually write seamlessly online and offline in the pro version, even though it's a website. You can go there, it'll load it up, it'll have a history of your script, it'll make some changes, close it, reopen it, all your changes are there. As soon as you connect the internet, it'll automatically sync it. And I think that's a conceptually difficult thing for people to realize, uh, but websites can work offline if you use the right tools, and so I think most people will use the web version because they like being most up-to-date, and they, you know, maybe they're using a different computer on their laptop, on their desktop at their office. Not to say you couldn't install the desktop at multiple places, but oops, one more step that people don't really think is that useful. The tr truth about the desktop app, and I think it's great, is um, this is a secret, you know, you'll know. The desktop app isn't that necessary. The main actual feature it has, is really one main feature it has that you cannot do in the web version, even with Chrome. Um, is you cannot create a PDF offline in the web version because browsers just don't have that capacity. So it has to get our server to do the PDF. In the desktop application, it can create the PDF offline. Okay. And that's important for two reasons. One is obviously you don't have an internet connection and you want to make a PDF, it's important. And two is we have a feature, this is a pretty darn cool one too, called client side encryption in the pro version, where some people worry about well, is the cloud secure or whatever, and the answer is nothing is secure ever because it's the internet. People are Bad, do bad things. Um, but we have a feature called client side encryption, which lets you encode everything with a special password, script specific password, not your account, that is never sent to our servers. And everything is encoded on your computer before it's sent to our servers, and it's decoded on your computer when it's sent back. And what that means is essentially, even if something terrible happens, God forbid, and I hope it never will, not good, blah, 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 we do, we do a lot to protect everything on our servers. But if something crazy happens, someone gains access to what's down there, it would be encrypted gibberish um, without a special password. And the cool part, again, about the PDF being offline is that is the one step, again, on the online version that has to, or the web version that has to go to our servers. Right. So with the desktop app, you can fully encrypt everything, never send plain text. So that's, that's kind of a cool feature. Other than that, um, pretty much web and desktop are pretty much the same. Okay, well, that's interesting because that was something I wanted to ask you about. So, uh, I mean, you've kind of cleared up a little bit of it, but so, you know, a lot of people that are hesitant about switching to Writer Duet, the main reason that I hear is, A, well, it's not Final Draft, and that's industry standard. Okay, <laughs> so, whatever. For the and, people who aren't watching, my tongue was sticking out when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> and then for uh, the, other, the other big reason that I hear is that they're afraid of their, their scripts being online. Um, yeah. So, how do you battle that? Other than obviously, you're, so you're encrypting, you know. So, but like, let's say somebody's uh, one of the free users, right? So they're not getting that encryption bounce. Is that correct? Right? So, in the end, uh, you know, <laughs> to some degree, if you're a free user, who is trying to steal your script? That's the first question I would have to ask. Uh, not to be disrespectful to your sure, script, yeah. but. You try getting people to read it. Good luck. <laughs> um, intentionally. So that, that's the number one. But um, that's sort of making light of a real concern. It is a real concern yeah, that people ask for this. And there was a time before there was client side encryption. And I got the reason I, I mean, I always sort of plan on doing it, but the reason I specifically did it is that these writers who were working on a project at Disney and they said, we have an NDA and if we put it on your site and it gets leaked, we will get sued. And people will not, you know, we do not want to get sued. Right. And all this stuff. And so I was like, yeah, I totally understand. I will make this feature now. And I don't plan on doing it anyway. And rolled it up for them and they're still using it and very happy with it. So that's a few years back by now. But the real thing is, Everyone should buy the pro version and give me money. <laughs> so that's that's the big advocacy there. Right. Uh, the other thing is, I know so many writers. And this is true. Who don't bother with client side encryption, even though they are the pro users, and they have scripts that are pretty, you know, sensitive. Mm -hmm. It's not to say they shouldn't use client side because I think kind of everyone should. I think it's a very valuable feature. Sure. But it turns out your script is less. In in secret demand than, than many people think. So that's, it's not that you shouldn't worry about it, you should use client-side encryption, it's cool, but right. realistically it's also not going to be a 
problem. And some of the other things about the cloud people have to think about is everything, every email you send is on the cloud. Every time you send a PDF to your friend, it's on the cloud. Is that using client side encryption? No. We would have to, you can't, I like think, improve it's not using client side encryption because you can enter a special password um, to do it. You can't do it without, it's once the password sent to a server, it's automatically reachable. Um, so I don't have a great, like, hey, what? This is how we solve everything. It's A, sure. we do solve it in a lot of situations. B, don't worry. C, use the pro version. But I take backups incredibly seriously. So Red Agua has five or six different ways you can back So first of all, automatically, by doing nothing whatsoever, right. you have an infinite history of everything you've ever done on a script. We yeah. have all your edits. We can time lapse it back and find anything you need. So automatically, everything is there. Let's say that fails. Well, we automatically save, and this is more in the Chrome browser, the desktop app, um, every 10 minutes, um, we're automatically saving script backups to your hard drive. Um, we're saving every time you press save manually, we're saving backups. Um, we also are saving to a secondary backup on our cloud. Our real-time stuff is backed up daily. And we have Dropbox and Google Drive automatic backup options in the Pro version. So if your script gets lost somehow, we did, we did actually have one reason, and then there was actually some weird bug on this guy's computer where we can actually even figure out why it went wrong, because it just wasn't saving backups and lots of bad stuff happened. But that was like one instance in three years. The number of instances where people actually lost stuff uh, is, is pretty um, less existent than when people have it on their hard drive, and their hard drive crashes. Mm -hmm. Lots of examples of that. Sure. Uh, very few instances of something on the cloud, uh, on our cloud, getting lost, because right. of all the backups we do take, and we back it up on your hard drive. And, but that so that hands-on approach that you have of, of, of uh, just kind of sweeping in and dealing with that problem. I mean, is that just is that typically you? Or is that is that a business model or wh where does that come from? Uh, me, it's my, uh, my, I hate when things go bad. Okay. I don't like problems, and I feel I feel guilty. Like if there were a bug, you might do it and cause someone to lose work. I would be really depressed, and um, I don't want someone to lose work. Even if it isn't a bug, I don't want them to lose work. Sure. So you know when they're publicly angry at me, it's probably more likely that I'll swoop in fast, but actually that's not even true, because people have emailed us all the time, not all the time, it's actually all the time, but um, it happens but when, when people do, accidentally yeah. do something, you know, often the, the common pattern I've seen, this is common, which you really need to avoid, is you accidentally select all and hit type a character, and suddenly your script was deleted, and you reload, and you're like, oh no, it's gone, we have the whole history of it, but uh, then that has happened not zero times um, to give you an estimate. It's either me, fortunately we have an admin assistant who's just a phenomenal person. Not only is she really, really patient, but I sometimes am not. She's good and she will help you very, very uh, responsibly. And so we, we take care of people if you have problems. And how big is your team? Um, it's hard to say, well, I mean, it's easy to say a number. It's hard to get the meaning of it because they're not all full time. Like our administrative person is more or less there when she's needed. Hopefully she's not needed too much for that problem. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but she's great with everything she does. And then we have another full-time programmers with behind me through this wall. Um, and we have some other programmers who have been involved and sort of you know, not involved right now or kind of work on and off. And then we also have a salesperson and an amazing intern. All, everyone, everyone, I say amazing sometimes, but I mean amazing for everybody because really I have not always been the case because I have to work with some people I you know, don't continue to work with because... They work out very well, but the people I keep working with are phenomenal, and I'm so thankful to have them because, you know, when you make something that you believe in, when other people don't take it as seriously as you do, it's it's terrible. It ruins your your focus and it ruins your energy and, and makes bad products. And I think everyone right now is just as passionate about delivering good products, good user experience, and good results and everything they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, ScreenCraft. Um, like, so what is that uh, partnership with ScreenCraft? How did that come about? Why, like, That's been in the sort of, we have worked together for actually probably two, two or more years. Um, I'm good friends with John Rhodes, uh, who's the founder of one of the co-founders of ScreenCraft. Mm -hmm. And we just always wanted to work together. He liked the product a lot. I liked that they were really out there, I think, trying to help writers. And a lot of contests exist. Not all are as focused, I think, on delivering results for writers and just making it educational and hopefully further successful process uh, if you do well in the contest. Um, so we just always want to find ways of in both helping support the product and be encouraging writers to, to learn and to get advanced in their writing career. And so the partnership specifically is educational focus. They have a bunch of ebooks that they wrote to try to help writers with, you know, either finishing, I think one is finished for screenplay in 60 days, one is for TV uh, writing, I think there's a third as well. 
And so they're always focused on trying to find ways of encouraging writers to not just start writing, but finish writing. Which is a big question to mine as well. If you yeah. start something, you don't want to finish it, fine, whatever. But if you want to finish it, right. finish it. And so they do that. And then they also have extra support they offer where you can, in the ScreenCraft Pro version, uh, you can just, you know, yeah, you can reach out to me, but I'm busier. I'm programming all day. So I try not to be the one to handle, not even, so we, in ScreenCraft, they have a chat where you can not just ask technical questions, but you can ask screenwriting questions like, how do I do a montage? Or, hey, this uh, you know this story is not working. I got these problems. What do you suggest? And you can actually talk to a, a you know some nice sold some stuff. And has been okay. And he's uh, he's got what I think you know, specific standard time hours. And that's in the screencraft version. So it's live support, educational material, and discounts on all their contests. And they have these um, master class videos that you get for free as well. So it's a bunch of different resources that they try to do to encourage writers to be successful in their writing, whatever they're trying to achieve. And. Uh I guess the, the other big thing that is really exciting about Rider Duet is uh, didn't you just make a big announcement about uh, going into the Chinese market for screenwriting? Yeah. How does that affect you guys? And, and um, uh, you know, why did you get involved us, and all that make, stuff? <laughs> makes us have a lot of late night conversations. I was up at 4 a.m. I think talking to someone, our partners in China last night. Yeah. My last night there, mid-afternoon probably. Uh, so... It's really great. I think China is, is a huge growing market for filmmakers and obviously film consumers. And first of all, the fact that they, the main technology they were using to write screenplays was Microsoft Word. And that is something that I hope everyone in your audience knows not to do. You try right. to do it. Um, Microsoft Word is just not built for screenwriting. And so um, what we do in China is not only introduce the first professional screenwriting program in Chinese across the board. You can write Chinese. All the messages, everything is, is Chinese-based. Um, we're also obviously offering what we think is the best in software. So they're, I think, leapfrogging the U.S. Because the U.S., a lot of people are still stuck on Final Draft or Celtics, which I just don't think are nearly as good. And in China, they don't have to bother with those. They can go straight to Red and do that. And it's been a great partnership. We have people in China who are already in the part of the film community. They're filmmakers themselves. And they have relationships with a lot of production companies. They've had other sales you know, stuff with them. And so those people are really doing our marketing, doing our sales in China, and are just a phenomenal partner in, in the ground work that we could not do as an American company who, frankly, is not qualified to go to China right. on our own. And so the production companies themselves are doing kind of the marketing for you? Well, no, actually, I mean, I'm ex not exaggerating, but um, the people, it's, it's a company that their focus is helping production companies. They do, um, they get film equipment, special effects equipment, they okay. do like, legal work for productions. They are also run by filmmakers who have their own project actually going on right now. They've had a number of projects in the past. So they're filmmakers who also have a company to help other filmmakers, which makes them the perfect partner because they understand the products. They understand why it's so important. And they, I mean, they were reaching out for a long time to get screenwriting software in China because they wanted it to be a professional format, um, which is really obviously helping the American screenwriters all be consistent and help with the production process. And so they have been the, you know, pushers of why China needs to standardize and the Chinese reaction has been phenomenal. Like we're doing very well over there and I think people are really excited in China to have a professional tool that is so cool, so good. Yeah, yeah. So they were your entry point? Like you, you didn't go to the production you went to them? Yeah, we talked to them and they brought us out actually to the Shanghai Film Festival and we had a big launch event there and they were running the whole thing. I was Sort of dragged around. Go here, go here. Say this. You know, and I was very happy to not have to make any decisions. I uh, turns out, yeah, I have some stories where I couldn't get a cab and all the stuff I couldn't do. My own. Mostly, I was just handled by people, uh, which is a very nice experience. Eat this. They told me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have a brother, uh, brother-in-law. He uh, he lives in uh, San Francisco and he works in software and, and he has to go to China, you know, mostly for parts and things like that. And uh, he goes. It'll go for two, three weeks at a time, and yeah. you know he tells I hope, me some I hope of the he stories. Knows the language better than I do. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. He knows how to write a uh, hoverboard now. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's what everybody there does. In these, oh, fac man. you know, these big factories, they just hoverboard around the whole factory. It's uh, I'm demanding that next time I go there. I'm not <laughs> showing. I'm getting my contract to hoverboard. Oh yeah, you gotta get one. It's <laughs> it's the cool new thing, right? <laughs> Um, so what's next for Writer Duet? What do you, where do you want to go with this? I mean, other than taking over the rest of the world, uh. Uh, it's so much stuff. Like we're 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 talking about features that if I explain them, 
wouldn't even, not that they wouldn't make sense, but you wouldn't even be able to picture how they're going to work. No one is doing it. These features that not just are going to be due for screenwriting software, they're going to be due for writing software. They're just like, I, I get so excited when I talk about them, but you also would find it very uninteresting because I'd be seeing all this worth in the unit. Like, what do you see? And you're like, wow, that's incredible. Um, and so that is going to happen uh, hopefully really soon. Our, our, a very aggressive target is October for the Austin Film Festival to have some really exciting new features there. Um, but we launch new features all the time. Like I'm going to go as soon as it's over. I'm going to get back to work and, and write some code that's being used for you know TV show that's in production now. Okay. So uh, we'll be uh, constantly improving it. And you know, what, what is the plan for years from now? I don't know. I, I don't plan that far ahead. I, I think what can we do now to make writers' lives better? And if the answer is this, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to wait around thinking about, is this part of the big strategy? I'm like, no, oh, this is useful. So people are reaching out to you that are in production on, on you know, big yeah. budget stuff, and they're, they're saying, you know, if we had this feature, it'd be great. Oh, all the time. Like, and, and it's hard to say no to those people, especially. Sure. I, don't, I don't know if they know to everybody, but they're out. Like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no. right now. Um, we are, yeah, we get, we get people who are mostly, like, right now it's more used in film than TV, which is actually the opposite of what should be true. It should be used everywhere, obviously, I think. But <laughs> TV would be incredibly useful for all the collaboration that do in writer's rooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there are some TV shows that are using it. There's one that I don't think I'm allowed to say the name of that's using it. And there's a guy who probably emails me, uh, I don't know, pretty, pretty regularly. And it's either questions uh, or occasionally bugs. He is the best QA person I have never I've never paid him once. He's never paying me. But man, if I could hire him for QA, he would be the best QA person you could get. Uh, so he's finding the bugs and he's just having ideas and suggestions and things that make their life easier in their production. And some of them are things that you know other programs do and a lot of them aren't. So a lot of times we're just trying to push the boundaries of what software can do to help people be successful. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what what new features come about. So uh, we're going to see you at uh, South by Southwest with a big panel and some big announcements. Is that what you're saying? Well, my, my hope is Austin Film Festival in October. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to be being there anyway. We're, I live in Austin, so we always, we always try to do that well. I don't know sure. if you know about the Heart Chart, which I did with screenwriter Jim Hart, yeah. of Hulk and Dracula, and a bunch of other big moves contact. So he and I did the Heart Chart, which we launched last year at the Austin Film Festival. We'll be back doing that again, doing some stuff on that, do some panels, and uh, we'll be doing spread that stuff. How's the response to the Heart Chart? Um, it's a little different because, because it's a niche within a niche, which makes it a little more difficult to, to sell and to market, especially because we're not, like I said, big into marketing. We're big into people liking and telling other people. And we do get that. Like, there is a lot of positive, like, everyone who's used it pretty much has a positive reaction to it. I've got, I get fan mail, which is just, I love whatever you're doing, and it's really fun to get those. You know, send them, send them. Um, but that one's certainly well received, but not as big as Writer Duet, um, just because of the nature of it being something not every screenwriter thinks they need. Every screenwriter kind of admits they need screenwriting software, except the ones who are using Word, who should all switch. Uh, I have a so, pencil. I, I'm good. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Hard Chart is, I think, a really, really helpful product. It lets you visualize stories. It lets you see your character's journey in a way that's more tangible than just sort of this happens, this happens, this happens. Is this happens and it affects the character in this way. And it's more an emotional journey, emotional storytelling, which Jim Hart himself is the master of, the master of structure. And so he took all the stuff he'd been teaching for 20-something years and encapsulated it in a program that not only has the you know physical tools to, to draw and to chart things out, but also has instructional videos and content from Jim Hart himself that we recorded in. and I think it's great whether it'll ever be as big as I do it probably not but will it be something that helps a lot of writers I certainly hope so I want to see people using it so one last thing I want to talk to you about uh, before we go is uh, you know our website and podcast really focuses on independent filmmaking and uh, you know people who are kind of forged their way uh, is there anything specific about writer duet that is more beneficial to you know, I want to say like younger or, or you know, emerging, the, emerging I'll, I'll give two and I'll give them the unfortunate order, which is one, it's free. There's a free version. And I'm not trying to say you should all use the free version. I hope you'll pay me, but there is a free version. And I'm very happy that people do use it because I want people to use good tools. If they're going to pay someone, pay me. If they're going to use a free version, use my free version. So um, that's probably the easiest sell to an independent filmmaker. But going beyond that, I think the main tool, um, everyone knows films are collaborative. But when you're doing independent stuff and you have all these different people who aren't necessarily um, uh, like all professionals and all knowing the ropes, it's really 
especially important to keep everyone on the same page. And so that's why I think uh, the collaboration aspect is especially useful for independent filmmakers who are all hustling and trying to get things done fast and don't have a budget that they can you know, mess up and waste a few days because someone got the wrong version of the script. Right. Um, I think those are the two easiest ones. But in general, I'll say for the younger audience, it's actually the third one, which is it's modern. Like, you know, we're all hopefully, you know, young and willing to try new things. Mm -hmm. But if you're a 20 something year old just out of college or in college, you're not even going, it doesn't matter. Uh, I do want to use technology that was made maybe before you were born, uh, which is actually when uh, that probably started for a lot of people. And the answer is if it's good, yeah, sure, why not? But if it's not keeping up to date, you would want to use something that works the way modern technology works in every other aspect of your life. You wouldn't want to go back and use something that doesn't feel modern, feel fresh. And with our duet, it's not just, like, we don't just say, hey, look, it's made recently, so it's modern. It's modern because we're using everything modern there is in technology. We're really pushing the boundaries of real time with the internet, how things can be better. And I think a lot of other software doesn't do that. So I think it's really, for a young filmmaking crowd, especially intuitive to start with something that feels like everything else they're using. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. I think that's exactly what I was thinking you would say. Hey, yeah, good. Huh? <laughs> Long script. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, and it, for me, I think the, the biggest thing is it's so nimble. I mean, you're, you're able to, like you said, you, you guys can make changes on, pretty much on the fly and, uh, you know, have them out, you know, as soon as you think of them, they're, they're kind of, instead of waiting for a revision after a revision and then, you know, maybe some things didn't get into that revision, now you're going to wait and, and you know, there's always grumbling, right? So... <laughs> Uh, I think that's yeah. a, a great thing about you and your company is that you, you're able to do that. We're not patient people. We're all like, hey, if we can do it today, we're going to just do it. We're not going to wait around and see if it happens on its own because it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> Man after my own heart right there. Yeah. <laughs> so how can people find you or do you want them to find you or should they just go to the website and leave you alone? <laughs> no, it's just sending big checks payable to... Uh, <laughs> no, um, they should go to... Follow me on... I don't, like I said, I don't post that much, but I'm at, at Writer Duet on Twitter. We have a Facebook group, Writer Duet. Sure. You can email me. If you can't figure out my email, you're not trying that hard, so I'm not going to say it here. Um, but you can get me. You can get me on Facebook groups. I'm, I'm probably about the most ex accessible uh, full-time CEO or whatever the hell I am. <laughs> um, so it's pretty easy to get a hold. I, I think the main thing is um, try right or do it. If you haven't used it yet, use it, if you used it a couple years ago, try it now. Like Just see what we're doing. And if it doesn't work for you, fine. And First of all, tell us. But second of all, if you have a system that works, we're not trying to say break the system that works. We're trying to say make your system better. And you know, we think we can help pretty much anyone with that. That's great. Well, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Tom, um, really thank you for having me. I'm really big, big, big fan of independent film and hope that you really help a lot of people with what you're doing. And I hope that I get to be part of that. As an indie filmmaker, the products that are flexible, responsive, and help facilitate workflow are invaluable because they allow us to get more done with limited resources. The fact that it's a fully professional level program also allows the indie filmmaker to work on projects for themselves or on bigger budget products with a seamless workflow. What excites me most about Writer Duet, besides its amazing functionality, is the ability for real-time collaboration with other writers. Indie filmmakers are often in a position where they are working on multiple projects and holding day jobs in order to bring their stories to life. Finding time to physically meet up with a writing partner, then make notes and changes can eat up valuable time. Writer Duet allows each collaborator on the script to log in through their own computer, to review changes by other writers, and even work on the script together in real time. John Fallon's Indie Film NYC is part of the Writer Duet affiliate program, so if you're interested in trying Writer Duet for yourself, please follow the link I provided in the show notes to sign up, totally free of charge. You don't even need to enter a credit card. You are encouraged to test out the software for as long as you like, and there is nothing to pay until you decide you'd like to upgrade. Only when you upgrade will Indie Film NYC get a percentage of the sale, and that helps us grow the site and pay for things like web hosting. There are some features, like the password protected encryption, that are only available on the pro version, but Guy is so sure that you won't be able to live without Rider Duet once you try it that he gave the free version more than enough functionality to create professional level screenplays right away. As he said during the interview, of course he hopes that you'll pay for the upgrade because it helps his company grow. But if you're only going to use free software, he hopes that you choose Rider Duet. If you have any questions, comments, or insights that you'd like to share with Indie Film NYC, please reach out to us. You can do that by leaving a comment on any of the show pages, emailing me at john at indiefilmnyc.com, or go to our contact page at indiefilmnyc.com forward slash contact.